Oh, welcome to First Presbyterian Church. Our guest preacher today is Steve Rogers. We're so happy he's here again. On the prayer request, please continue to pray for John Leib. There's a correction in the bulletin. It should not be light. It should be Leib, L-I-P-E. Let us prepare for worship as we listen to the prelude. and animals that inhabit the wild places of glory. A messenger in the wilderness brings good news. God's people cry glory. In baptism, we are united to God through Jesus Christ. Creation, we cry glory. Thank you. 
sin receive the baptism of repentance so that we who have sinned may be covered by his righteousness the spirit enables us to tell the truth of our brokenness assured already of the grace we know in jesus christ let us confess together creating god we cannot look at our lives our communities or the world around us without seeing the fractures and brokenness reflect the reality of sin you created the earth and called it good but it now groans awaiting redemption and recreation under the weight of our greed abuse and carelessness you created humanity in your image and called us very good but we have ignored the image of god in, in each other we have created maintained and benefited from unjust systems built on divisions based on race, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, and more. You poured out your love in Jesus Christ. You showed us how to live and how to love, but we continue to make our own path, follow our own desires, and neglect to love others as Christ loved us. Mercy and we pray this now. Amen. The heavens part, the waters swirl, and the dove descends, reminding us that we too are God's beloved children. We are covered by God's grace and forgiven. In Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us share with one another signs of peace and reconciliation as we greet each other in Jesus' name.
God of wisdom, send your Holy Spirit upon us to show us your word and show us your way. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today is from Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven people being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And the voice came from the heaven. 
You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. I think we have the microphone issues resolved. Uh, maybe resolving, maybe. Are, are we? Okay, this is better. I, I like to, to wander, but I'm willing to be constrained. Happy New Year. Here we are in a very busy uh, Sunday of the uh, liturgical calendar as, uh, as we celebrate the Epiphany, the Sunday of Epiphany, when Jesus was okay, when Jesus was uh, seen revealed to the world as the Magi came and uh, and saw him in the manger. That's Epiphany. That's celebrated uh, twelve days after Christmas, which is technically yesterday. But this is the Sunday in which we observe the Epiphany. It's also the Sunday when we observe the baptism of the Lord, which is uh, the, the text that was read uh, from the gospel. And as, as fitting for the new year, it's also the gospel, the Old Testament text from Genesis chapter 1, the creation. All of that goes together to talk about beginnings. This is the beginning of a year, the beginning of a church year, the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, which we'll be reading through in the lectionary throughout the year. And it's good, a good time for us to stop and consider what is God beginning to do in our midst in these days. So with that kind of backdrop in mind and with thinking in terms of new beginnings, Let's explore a little bit about what it were, was being read in the gospel lesson, the baptism of Jesus. We, we hear that John the Baptist was by the Jordan River and people were coming from Jerusalem and all over the land to be baptized by John in the Jordan River, which sounds simple enough on the surface, but the fact is, the Jordan River is not located in a convenient place for people to go and be baptized. If you lived in Jerusalem, to make it to the Jordan River was a full day's journey, a difficult journey over rough terrain, and then a full day's journey to go back home. People were, people were doing that, but it's not something you just do casually. You've got to take off work. You've got to arrange for some place to stay while you're there, carry your food. It's quite a commitment to go and hear John the Baptist preach and experience that baptism. So why did John do it there? There were many more convenient locations where people, where there was water available, where people could have come. If you wanted to attract a big crowd, you should locate your, your uh, uh, message in a convenient location so that people can come. You know, a convenient location like this, where you have to go through the neighborhood and stand on your head to even get here. Sorry, that was uncalled for. <laughs> But John did not choose the Jordan River because it was convenient. He chose the Jordan River because it was symbolic. And the people were used to thinking in symbolic terms. When you were to, if you heard that a preacher, a prophet, who kind of dressed and acted strange and called himself the voice of one in the wilderness, which is a quote from Isaiah that you would have recognized when you hear that this prophet is out baptizing people in the Jordan River you would immediately have thought what the Jordan River was all about and of course you recognize Joshua led the people of Israel across the Jordan River into the promised land in fact if, once you think about that passage through the water you go back 40 years to Moses, who also led the nation of Israel through the Red Sea, through the Jordan River, through the Red Sea, out of slavery in Egypt into freedom. 
Out of the wilderness into the promised land, the parallel between those two events is very obvious and people would have immediately thought of it. So here is John at the Jordan reminding the people of Israel of what God had done to bring them into the land. And here's Jesus who came to be baptized as part of that crowd. In fact, the name Jesus is interesting. If you were to pronounce the name in Hebrew, it would come out Yeshua, which is only one letter different from Yahshua, the one who brought the people through the Jordan in the time of, of the Exodus. So here is a new Joshua, this Jesus, coming to the same river and inviting people as part of the ministry of John to participate in what God is doing in a new way. Very interesting that, that all of this happened in that symbolic location. And when Jesus was baptized, there was a voice from heaven. A voice which you may not recognize it, but they were, it was quoting scripture. You are my son. That's a direct quote from Psalm 2, which is talking about the son of David, the Messiah, who is to come and be God's anointed Messiah, adopted as the son of God to lead God's kingdom on the earth. And the voice says, this is the son that was being talked about all that time ago. The son who is well loved, with whom God is pleased. That quotes several passages of scripture, noticeably the suffering servants poems in Isaiah, where God says, my servant in whom my heart delights, in whom I am well pleased. The voice from heaven was recognizing Jesus as the one who comes to fulfill all of the prophecy that was pointing to the coming Messiah. Jesus is being revealed as the one who's doing a new thing. Which is appropriate to think about on this Epiphany Sunday. I think it's possible to see the entire gospel story through the lens, through the, the, the interpretive grid of seeing it as a series of epiphanies, of revelation of who Jesus is in greater and greater detail. Think about the whole gospel story. The angels sang when Jesus was born. The Magi came from the east to recognize him. This baptism was another epiphany when the whole nation of Israel saw and heard John the Baptist say, this is the one coming after me that is greater than me, who is the fulfillment of all God's promise and plan. And the epiphanies go on through the gospel. If you uh, think about it as you, as you read through, Jesus turned the water into wine, revealing his power to his disciples. The transfiguration Many other occasions when Jesus opened the eyes of the blind and revealed himself as the Son of God, healing the sick, forgiving sins. The whole gospel story is the story of Jesus being revealed and the epiphany of people recognizing and understanding who he really is. So that's what's going on in this story. Reenacting the baptism, the, the going through the water uh, uh, of, of the Red Sea and of the Jordan. And, and realize I'm not just making this up. The early Christian thinkers from the beginning saw this in these terms. For example, Paul, writing much later to the Corinthian church, says in chapter 10, I believe it is, that all of Israel was baptized into Moses when they crossed the Red Sea. And, Paul goes on to make the point, we are likewise baptized into Christ, joined into a community, a new Israel, if you will, because of our faith in Jesus. It relates back to the 
creation story reading as well. When the Spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. If you follow that theme of water through the Old Testament, you'll see it over and over again. God, through the Spirit, descending on the waters in Genesis and in Mark, and bringing new creation into reality. Over and over, the gospel talks about the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth. This story is really quite central to the whole understanding of the gospel. And so what does John say about this one who is greater, this one who is the fulfillment of all the prophecies of the past? John says, I am baptizing you in water. I'm recreating that baptism that we've already experienced. But this one is coming and he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Now don't be alarmed. This baptism in the Holy Spirit is not just some optional extra for Pentecostals only. Presbyterians believe in it too. So you know, don't, don't be alarmed. Jesus came to baptize the people of God, to immerse and fill us with the Holy Spirit. The water, the water of baptism is a symbol, if you will, of what God was always intending to do something greater. To be completely surrounded by, immersed in, filled with the very presence of God. That's what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to do a new thing. Built on the foundation of what God had already done in the past, but extending it forward into what God had always visualized doing and intended to do in the future. And that is what we participate in today. So here on this first Sunday of the new year, I want to invite us to more than just some surface level resolutions to uh, eat less cake or whatever. I want to invite us to a resolution that goes deeper, that recognizes the fullness of what God is wanting to do in our midst. Here in this new year, this new beginning, I want to invite us to experience a new what might lie ahead of us in the future? As individuals, where is God leading you? As a church community, where is God leading us? What do we want to be and become? Or more better said, what does God want us to be and become? What if in this new year, our resolution could be, we will follow where the Spirit leads us. We will become what God is creating us to be. I want to proclaim as good news, it's not too late. We can become what God created us to be. Can we sing that glory refrain again? That, that's great good news. God is not finished with us. God has great and glorious things in store for us. And the baptism of Jesus reminds us that we are following the one who is going to lead us into the new creation the new world, the new heaven, and the new earth. So I want to invite us to take away from all of this a couple of, of principles. First of all, I invite us to remember the epiphanies that God has revealed Himself to us in the past. Remember your own baptism. And if you were young at the time, remember other times when God has revealed the reality of Jesus to you. Maybe in times of crisis, times of grief, times of joy, 
What are the times that you have experienced the presence and the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life? Spend some time, I invite you, this week, this afternoon, thinking about those times and the epiphany of God who has revealed himself to each one of us in a unique way suitable for us. Remember what God has done. And then experience what God is doing now. The past is great and wonderful as a foundation, but you've got to grow beyond it. God is still at work today. What is God leading you to do, be, and become in this new year? Think about that. Ask Him. What would you like to do in me? God today and then remember the past experience the present and anticipate the future God has in store God is doing a new thing in our lives in our church in our community I dare say in our nation and world we need that new thing where we are is not where we need to be. And so I invite us to experience a longing anticipation for what God has next. And once you have discerned what it is, I invite you to fearlessly follow whatever the Holy Spirit is leading you to do and become. It'll be a great adventure. It'll be a great new year. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, may it be so. stand and join in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of the heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the 
Father Almighty. From them he will come judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Gracious God, our Creator, who spoke the word over the darkness of the deep and brought light into our world. We pray that you would speak your word over the darkness of our souls and bring light into our experience. We stand in need of the fullness of your Spirit living within us. We're weak and foolish and so prone to go our own way. Draw our feet back onto the path. Draw us back to the water and baptize us again in the fullness of your presence. We pray for your word of light in the darkness of our world. Remembering the friends and family whose names we know who have special need of your touch and your presence in these hours. We pray for healing and encouragement and for new hope and new life. We pray for our nation at this beginning of a new year and for the many places in our world where darkness seems to be overtaking light. We reach out in faith to the author of all light and we trust that you will engage with us, guide us and direct us into the path where we should go. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be justice among people. Let love rule in our hearts. And here at the beginning of this new year, that pretty much sums up our prayer. Transform us to become the people you created us to be. And hear us as we pray in the words our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Will you join me in, or not, don't join me yet. Hear this communion prayer. Gracious Lord, who called forth light out of darkness and life out of nothing, we listen for your voice calling us out of our past and into a new year. As our Savior was baptized in the River Jordan, so baptize us in the river of your boundless love. Give us grace to hear your voice calling us, your beloved children, that we may fearlessly face forward into the life you place before us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God of light and creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When, when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. You made yourself known to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, blessing him at his baptism and naming him as your son in whom you are well pleased. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. 
poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Body of Christ, go for you. The blood of Christ, poured out. All are invited to come to the table of the Lord. As you are ready, you are welcome to come.
Will you stand as we pray together? Holy God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. We trust in the provisions of your love and the abundance of your grace and in the coming year. May the gifts we offer bring glory to you in the ways they bear your love into the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. God is doing a new thing. Refreshed and renewed by the waters that unite us to God and each other, let us go into the world, empowered by the Holy Spirit, following the way of Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our parent God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us today and always. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace. Save the love of God's around you. Go now in peace, go now in peace, in the love of God's around you, everywhere, everywhere you may go. Thank you.